All right, folks, it's Mr. Heyer again. Uh, we're going to start our electrostatics unit. We're going to break it into several different sections. Um, the first section is going to be about the nature of charge. Um, in between all your notes and stuff, you should be placed in this one big packet that says electro electrostatic notes, which you, should be able, which you should be able to get on your class as well. You can either print them out or use the Google Doc to uh, type in your work. And then if you need to draw anything, you can do it in... Uh, just in a separate sheet of paper and keep them together. All right, so the nature of electric charge. All right, um, the topic we're covering now is electrostatics, and that just simply means electricity at rest, charges, electric charges that don't move. Um, when you open up your sweater, or open up your dryer in the winter, particularly, and you got some sweaters in there, and you get shocked by that, those are because the charges have built up and aren't moving in the sweater, but as soon as you touch them, it gives them a place to go, and that's how you get shot. Right, electric charge is a it's a it's a considered to be a property of matter, and it's caused by an imbalance of electrons and protons. Okay, something that's considered to be negative if it has more electrons than protons, and it's considered to be positive if it has more protons than electrons. Right, and we know that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. And this is called electric force. It's the force, the force of attraction or repulsion between two objects due to a charge. And this, this force is much, much stronger than gravity. And we'll see that as we go along. Right, so in an atom, we know that the protons are positive and they're in the nucleus along. So the protons are there along with the neutrons, but the neutrons don't have any charge. They're just there um, for other reasons. Electrons are negative, and they surround the nucleus in what we call the electron cloud, and they stay there because of the attraction between the, of the, between the proton and the electron. Okay, so we know with electric charges, we know that opposite charges attract, so a positive charge attracts a negative charge and vice versa, and like charges repel, positive charge re repels another positive charge or a negative or repel a negative. And then neutral um, are not naturally attracted to anything, but we'll see some situations where it kind of is. Okay, electric chart. Um, the electric charge is the source of shocks and sparks, right? Um, the two states, again, are positive and negative, so if something loses or gains electrons, it's said to be charged. Again, if it loses electrons, then it's considered to be positive. If it's gaining electrons, it's said to be negative. Right? And then how would it change the mass? Well, it changed the mass just a little bit. Electrons are really, really, really tiny, and it's the electrons that actually move, right? Because protons are caught in the nucleus. They can't go anywhere. The electrons are the things that move. So when something becomes positive, it gains electrons. I mean, if something becomes positive, it loses electrons. And if it becomes negative, it gains electrons. Protons don't move around. So if it's if it's um, something that becomes negative, it's gaining electrons. So it becomes has slightly more mass, not much more mass, but a little bit more. Right. And then if it becomes positive, it means it loses electrons. So it becomes has a little bit less mass, but not enough for anybody to ever notice. Right. And then clothes stick together in the dryer because they're charged. One piece of clothing is positive, the other piece is negative, so they stick together. All right, so the symbol for electric charge is the letter Q. Why Q? I don't know. C has already been taken, so I guess Q is the next best thing. And the unit for charge is known as the Coulomb, usually just the letter C, and it's named after Charles Coulomb, who was a uh, French physicist who did a lot of work with charges. Right. So just a couple of things you're going to need to know. So you want to have this somewhere nearby. So you have access to this. Um, the charge of an electron is considered to be negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And the charge of a proton is exactly the same as an electron. It's just the opposite charge. So it's positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So they match up with each other perfectly. So if something has 50 electrons and 50 protons, then we know it is neutral because they cancel each other out. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. Um, how much charge does 30,000 electrons have? Well, we start off with the equation 
um, it's not really an equation, but just kind of the expression that the total charge is going to be the number of electrons times the charge of electrons. Charge of one electron. Well, we know there's 30,000 electrons. We know from the last slide that it's the charge of electrons negative 1.6 times negative, negative 19. Using our calculator, we just multiply them together, and we get that total charge to be negative 4.8 times 10 to negative 15 coulombs. Just simply uh, multiplying them together. Next example, balloon gains this many coulombs of charge when you rub, maybe when you rub it against your head or something like that, how many electrons were transferred. So now we work on it a little bit backwards, all right? Again, we start with the same expression that the total charge is just the number of electrons times the charge of electrons. Thing This time we don't know, this is going to be our question mark, all right? So we just put in, let me move my picture in there, all right? Negative. So our charge is total charge is negative two times ten to the minus six or minus eight, sorry. That's gonna equal the number of electrons times the charge of an electron. Then we just divide and we find out it's one point two five times ten to the eleventh electrons. That's a lot of electrons. But you gotta remember electrons are really, really, really small. Okay, so this is our this again, this is the this is the introduction to the amount of charge. Um you'll down the road, you'll have to be able to use these this this little expression when we start talking about how things are charged. But right now, we're not going to have any more practice with that. But stay tuned for the next topic.